Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about the room versus the room shell. There's a lot of confusion that we see and I think uh, once again some definitions and clarity will, will help the situation because your room requires a certain set of uh, guidelines in order to get good sound out of it and then the shell in an ideal world um, when you're designing and building a room requires special uh, conditions and and variables that must be addressed so let's let's define some things and, and use some examples here and I I hope this will help clarify things a little bit in an ideal situation when you're building your room you're really building a room within a room it's kind of like that Russian doll concept where you have a small doll inside a bigger doll and you just keep opening up and it's layers well we have an outside area which is really our barrier and that's called the shell okay so when you see the term shell you you know that that's the outside barrier of the room now what does that do it does two things it keeps noise from entering the room and it also keeps noise in the room where it belongs. So it serves two functions. So it has a structural design. It has a structural capacity that it must follow. So it's barrier technology and it's isolating sounds that occur outside the room from getting in and sounds that are in the room from getting out. Now, that said, what is the room? Well, the room is different. The room deals with the energy that's in the room, okay? So that's where our sound absorption and sound diffusion technologies come into place to manage the pressure in the room and to manage the reflections off the room surfaces. So we have the shell that's designed to keep noise in and out, and then we have the inside room which we must deal with the two areas which are pressure and reflections so most of us don't have the luxury of having two rooms or a room within a room so what we have to do then is use the existing room as both a barrier and a treatment type of situation well most rooms that we see are not designed to isolate any kind of sound from anything really they're two by four two by six frame structures and quite honestly those, those uh, structures don't do much for isolation if your noise levels are high inside or outside so once again we're we're trying to get one one structure our existing room to do many many things and that's just not possible so we always run into difficulties. We always run into, oh, there's too much noise in the room next door to our home theater. Well, that can't be helped unless we're willing to build the appropriate barrier technology to isolate the sound because the science be behind isolation and the science behind the room treatment elements, diffusion and absorption are completely different. There is some similarities, but they are, are a little bit different. Another thing you have to realize when you finally build your room within a room is that there's a relationship between the room, the shell, and the room. There's an air space between them. There's some kind of space between them. That all has to be calculated. And then energy from the room will leave the room and strike the shell and then come back in the room. So there is a flexibility rigidity ratio that you have to maintain between the shell and the in, and the room construction in an ideal situation. A lot of people use concrete for the outside barrier. Makes sense. Lots of mass. Expensive. Um, it does achieve some isolation properties. It does have good sound transmission class ratings. But that's a very rigid structure. So when energy leaves our room and it will and strikes the shell it's reflected back into the room so we need to have some kind of balance between the structure of the room and the outside barrier so there's a i call it a rigidity flexibility ratio that you must uh, maintain 
all of this, the shell, the room, everything inside contributes to the type, quality, and uh, signature, if you will, of the sound in your room. So everything has to be taken into consideration. What I see a lot of people trying to do is use their existing room and wonder why it's not keeping sounds inside and keeping outside sounds from coming in. Well, it's because it's not designed to. It's designed basically as a room, which you put sound absorption and sound diffusion technologies in. So in summary, let's look at the, the outside uh, uh, room as our shell, and that's our barrier between noise from the outside of the world and, and uh, keeping the sound that we produce inside of it from leaving and going into adjacent rooms. And then we have the room itself, which we use sound absorption and sound diffusion technologies. So sound diffusion, sound absorption technologies in the room, barrier technology for the structure itself, completely different. So I hope that helps you grasp a little bit of the difference between the room and the room shell. You Thank enjoyed you. Enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email info at acousticfields.com and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week. So stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.